in this video an update on the earlier published schematics about this C10 watt amplifier and also on the preamplifier that was made to um, serve this end amplifier. At first you can see for instance here that I've used shielding, it's template, it is uh, here connected to the underside and the backside of my uh, wooden board on which I made it all <coughs> with brass nails is also covered with template it was glued to template and here I made a hood that say covers the whole amplifier in this way uh, to keep it properly shielded uh, of course I had to make some adaptations to the circuit at first I used not a 7 for one chip but a TL071 and that's a FET field effect transistor uh, op amp. So here in the circuit you see a 7 for one <coughs> but I've used here this chip the TL071 and the good thing of that uh, new chip was that the bass frequencies were much better amplified and that's good of course. Uh, so this is how the circuit was made. I will show the real schematic first. Perhaps that gives a better insight. This is the schematic. So changes to the circuit that I made and it's now 16 March 2021. So this is the final video about this amplifier. The changes that I made, um, here a 10 nanofarad capacitor was soldered. Here a 10 nanofarad capacitor was soldered. It gave a much better waveform on the complete frequency band between say 50 Hz and 50 kHz. Quite big, especially with the TL071. Uh, here a 10 nanofarad capacitor. Here I bridged the bias resistor with a 2K resistor. You can of course calculate the total resistance. Uh, this was here uh, changed. Another resistor was sold, soldered parallel to that 27K resistor all to keep the bias properly to keep it in good order so that you can change the bias with two potentiometers here the one mega ohm here and the 4k7 here this is important there's a wire here very important um, I also soldered here two 4m7 so 4.7 mega ohm resistors here parallel uh, from one electrode to the wiper here and from the wiper here to the other electrode and this is the input so that were the important adaptations to make this circuit very um, properly no problems with bias uh, everything all the frequencies were say amplified fine and here perhaps interesting how the circuit was soldered with all the components. Uh, important to tell this is on the back side, this is the front side, the front side, etc. etc. And here I use that TL071CP chip. Second uh, issue was the preamplifier. Here's a schematic of the preamplifier. Perhaps it looks quite strange. I have tested it over and over and it worked, it worked very properly. I will demonstrate that. Here is the circuit in real. Here is my music machine. You can use um, all kinds of inputs. Say um, 
smartphone and then the headphone out plug, an mp3 player, a cd player and say that's why I've uh, told here 0 0.8 volt um, AC in. I've used in this preamplifier uh, overall non-polar capacitors. You can see that here one microfarad and here and here and here. Uh, they are much more expensive compared to um, electrolytics. But electrolytics will on the longer time fail. That's more or less absolutely sure. Say after 10 years when such a capacitor uh, gets a leak resistance it will take out the transistor out of its proper bias, its proper working point. So when you want to have a reliable circuit uh, use non-polar capacitor and capacitors and especially for audio circuits use foil types. So in general no ceramic types. Foil types work the best because that's at least my opinion. Um, they are able to transport the whole frequency band in a more easy way compared to ceramic types in the higher uh, microfarad range. That's what I mean. Especially it's all about the higher microfarad range. Uh, transistors did I use the BC547. Later I used the BC550C. It's a pin to pin replacement and that BC550C has a somewhat better noise figure. And um, perhaps you think this is a straight circuit because there's a wire here. And that was also one of my ideas. But it worked very good and that's why I publish it. You can see here that we have the input here. Uh, then we can here with that switch um, choose between directly the input here but it's not directly to the input it is connected to the emitter that's important so not to the the wiper of the 500k potentiometer but to the emitter and here we have a certain switch and that switch is very important I will demonstrate the sound effects of that switch. Uh, it's able to uh, say push the middle frequencies in the audio range back and push the bass frequencies somewhat up. Has everything to do with the properties of the human ear. Made a kind of graph. I hope it is a little bit easy to understand the human ear is most sensitive between say 800 Hertz and 4 kilo Hertz kilo cycles uh, that means when you play music on a very low level in your room um, you will hear or think that the bass frequencies are lost you will only hear part of the the middle frequencies in the complete frequency range between say 20 Hertz and say 17 kilohertz. Uh, that means that when you play music on a low level in your audio, in your room you have to lift up the bass frequency somewhat and perhaps also lift up the higher frequency somewhat but suppress the say the audio range where your ear is most sensitive to get a kind of pleasant sound and uh, in general we call that loudness that was very popular in the 1980s 1960s perhaps also 1990s and music purists uh, say for instance that that sound is colored anyway no problem with that uh, well, let's listen. I'm going to uh, put in this music card and let's listen to the sound. Um, well, let's listen.
this is the characteristic where we set the preamplifier to be used in say a silent room uh, as background music so you need a kind of bass boost a kind of loudness lift up uh, lift up the bass frequency somewhat and now we have disconnection when you hear that sound it's disconnection here and it goes here to the emitter of the first transistor stage and that's interesting because even when uh, we listen in this kind of loudness mode we can change the sound characteristic a little bit by changing the values so of these two resistors this resistor here sorry this resistor here and that potentiometer here both potentiometers here so let's do that again and listen small mistake mistake and I'm gonna not I'm not going to do the video all over again uh, the switch was in another position so where we could say directly hear the the music machine now I switch to the other position that's the position that I meant earlier uh, playing music uh, in a silent room on the background so relaxing etc etc so kind of mellow sound uh, woolly sound anyway that's what I'm going to show now and interesting <laughs> going to shortcut that 100 ohm resistor here to show how to push the middle frequencies back to get even an, an more relaxing sound in your living room well now I've shortcutted it hear so much difference but I'm absolutely sure that it worked and uh, well I cannot say uh, demonstrate it with better music to demonstrate all the different frequency effects etc anyway I have still uh, say one minute to show the properties of this circuit, the end amplifier and the pre-amplifier. Uh, you can be sure that when you make it, it works properly. And don't forget the shielding, that's important. And the one point earth um, also important.
I messed up the say the switches somewhat, but this is how it works. This is the the background sound. That's important. Background in a, background in a silent room. Even on very very low volumes, you he you have a good mellow sound. Ripe sound. So, I hope it was a little bit uh, convincing, this uh, demonstration, but the circuits are very well, uh, say, uh, searched, tested, etc, etc. Very, very well. I did many tests about uh, the music, quality of the music, typical sound, endurance, etc.